in the advanced webinars, we've been working with the fire energies, and that's a particular circuit. And at the base of that circuit, it's the ovaries and testes, uterus and prostate. Then the other organs, well, moves up to the small intestines. The hara isn't an organ, but it's close to the navel, the heart, the thymus, different areas in the face, different areas in the brain. And I started teaching that, and there was just a lot of new information around the base organs in that, the ovaries, testes, uterus, and prostate. And I've called those the chalice and seed for both men and women. The uterus and prostate are the chalice, the ovaries and testes are, are the seed. And we started with that. And I started a whole new webinar series to go along with that, because when we channel, and we're going to be doing that today, we're going to be channeling into our chalice and seed. When you channel into your chalice and seed from the higher self, God, the divine, whatever you want to call it, it clears the karma for when you're gestating in the womb and it starts clearing the karma through the female lineage where you mother to daughter, mother to daughter, mother to daughter, passed on through the karma of their own womb in every birth, certain amount, because you spend nine months in your mother's womb, it'd be pretty hard not to take on something. <laughs> and there's a good chance you were around each other in a past life as well, or many of them. Um, and channeling through that area starts clearing that karma. But also what happens when we channel into that area, we won't be doing it today, but we do it in that new series, there's one next Sunday, we actually conceive for the men, you'll conceive, well, men and women conceiving into the chalice areas, channeling into it. Then after stage comes the seed of life and creation, and you become both the mother and the baby in that relationship. And that breaks the continuity of mother to daughter, mother to daughter, because you're no longer in that. It's intrinsically within yourself. It's not a memory of what's gone before. It is how the gestation and karma unfolds around the breath and the universal energies. And that becomes a good way of clearing that karma. We're not going to get that far today. We're just going to channel into that area to cleanse that area. Uh, but you are welcome to come next Sunday. It's at a discount. It's three webinars for £18. It started off as a discount at two webinars for £18, and I added an extra one for free. So you're welcome to carry on and do that, and that will lead on from this webinar. But today we're going to be working with a bit the fire energy. Well, we're going to start off with what we've learned from the cranial web and mass by opening up the cranial sea through the brain and breathing with that and out through the nervous system. And then we're going to come in contact with the third eye, which is part of the fire circuit. And then we're going to work through the fire circuit, and then we're going to come down into the uterus and prostate, just channel into that area. That's as far as we're going to go, but that's going to be enough, really, for, a, 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 for new people just learning that will be plenty. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, so we're going to start off learning holographic breathing which gives us the access to our inner energies inside our brain to the cranial sea to our inner anatomy and then we're going to carry on to those things that i mentioned and
And in the first meditation, I will teach holographic breathing, but we will also open up into the cranial sea. And I'm, before I go into teaching holographic breathing, I'm just going to show you a couple of pictures just will help in the imagery of viewing inside your brain because most people when they think of inside their brain there's a brain there <laughs> <laughs> and it's this solid thing and uh, that's perfectly you know a normal and right thing to do but there's another way of looking at it as well in that the whole brain is 90 percent water there's a, a picture of inside your brain and this is all water this is a ventricle um, that's a hundred percent cranial sea and this is where all the cells are in the brain that's 90 percent cranial sea and the cranial sea is 99 percent water and then it's oxygen, salt, and glucose. Cranial sea is basically seawater. It's about as close to seawater as you're going to get without having fish in it. And there are actually some things that are like fish in it. There's one there, the microglial cells, and they swim around in your brain and mend things and kill bugs and stuff like that. So it does actually have, notice the the uh, neuron looks a bit like a starfish and the astrocyte cells look like sea anemones. It is like the sea with seaweed, sea anemones, little fish. You know, you could have a glass skull and it'd be people would look in like looking into a fishbowl or something to see all the aquatic life going on in the brain. So that is a very different picture to having a picture of this solid brain. Oh, how do we view inside the solid brain? But if you have an image of this, plenty of space to move around in there. Salt water is about as good a conductor of spirit that you're ever gonna want. Salt water channels spirit. If you want to do some channeling, you can put your hands on people. But also, if you get a bottle of water, put a bit of salt in it, mineral water, put a bit of salt in it, put that on someone and hold that, you will start channeling. <laughs> the spirit will go through that pretty good. There you go. Already in a free webinar, I've already taught, taught you a whole new healing system. Just get a bottle of water, put it on people, call yourself Jesus or a female deity, something like that, and you can start your, your own sessions. <laughs> right, I'm going to show you a couple of other pictures. Um, we're going to go into the third eye area. And um, I'll give more information in a second, bit, just to show it in a bit more detail. But mm -hmm. yeah, but just I'll just show here's a, a picture. The um, this is the face is kind of here. The eyes are kind of round here somewhere and this is the central brain complex coming up this is the third ventricle which is just seawater and the, the pituitary gland comes down into that little hole so it's kind of behind your eyes the optic nerve comes through here and joins onto the bottom so it, that's about eye height and it's the pituitary gland is here so it's behind your eyes i'll give you a little bit more information on that later here's another one the third ventricle is in the middle the pituitary gland will be coming forward these are the lateral ventricles the thalamus the central brain complex so that's about it for what i'm going to give you at the minute because i just want to give you an idea of what the brain is made of about 
where the third eye complex is, where the pituitary is, and then you have to tune into it yourself. Um, the thalamus, the top of the central brain complex, that is a different circuit. That is at the higher energy circuit, but the very center, the third ventricle and the pituitary gland, this is called the hypothalamus. This ignites the fire circuit. So when we come into that, you may feel a lot of warmth, you may feel it connecting to your heart, you may feel it connecting to your chalice and seed. And then in the second meditation, I'll show you more anatomy, we'll be able to look at more energy points, and then we'll hopefully be able to get to a point where we can just channel through into our chalice and seed. I'm discovering that's the bit I like is channeling. <laughs> We're kind of doing more and more channeling in these groups. I may start up just a short group where I teach holographic breathing and then we just sit around channeling for half an hour or so. Um, might be quite good fun. Um, right, we're going to teach you holographic breathing now. So in holographic breathing, and let, let's start off just with holographic breathing, the tongue is on the roof of the mouth. It's the upper surface of the tongue is on the roof of the mouth. The tip of the tongue is close to or touching the front teeth. And the lips are closed and the breath is through the nose. So if you just start off with, doing that. Now, it's as much as the tongue on the roof of the mouth as feels comfortable. So it may be half an inch, maybe a whole inch, maybe the whole tongue on the roof now, but it has to feel comfortable, whatever feels the most comfortable. The lips are relaxed and closed and the breath is through the nose. Now, Along with this, the jaw gently opens on the in-breath and gently closes on the out-breath. But for the new people who are learning this, I don't want you to do that bit yet because it can be strenuous if you just try and do it. You're kind of doing it rather than it happens. There's a certain way I talk people into letting that happen. But in the meantime, what will make it easier just becoming used to the flat of the tongue on the roof of the mouth, the lips relaxed and closed, and the breath through the nose. Now, the movement of the jaw, it's small. It's about half a finger width, two or three millimeters. It's a very small motion. It's not big at all. And at a certain point, in the teaching of this, it starts off as a doing. It starts off, you're definitely moving the jaw. But at a certain point, it just integrates into your breath. And it's like a memory, as if I've always known this from somewhere before. It's like, and probably you did. Probably for me, you were breathing like this in the womb or as a young child. And it's a bit like a very subtle form of suckling. So we definitely did something very similar as a young child. So I'm gonna just demonstrate it. You probably won't even see the movement. Oh, I, I forgot to mention, we've got uh, some kind of hurricane happening here at the minute. And uh, if my internet goes down, my apologies, but apparently people's electricity is going down, people's internet is going down. But with the grace of God, there you go, I've said that word again, or by the grace of the higher whatever creator, um, we will get through okay. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate it for three or four breaths, just so you probably won't see the motion, but at least you'll notice that his lips stay closed. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to do that for a bit.
And very, very quickly, at least for me, I kind of go into this shamanistic, deeply meditative place. It's not just a breathing exercise. It's a breathing modality. You get taken into a different way of being with holographic breathing. And it opens up all sorts of healing systems through your body. And it definitely starts working and healing through the brain. So how I healed myself of Lyme disease. And for the newcomers, what sometimes happens is we get halfway through the guided meditation to learn this and people start thinking, you can't open and close your jaw without opening and closing your lips. So I want everyone to try that to start off with just have your lips closed and then just gently moving the jaw up and down, just a small motion, three or four millimeters, half a finger width and notice that it's easy to move your jaw and to keep the lips closed. We do that eating every day, okay? And you can let that come to an end. Another thing to mention, when I start speaking and explaining things, I have to slow down and People get annoyed because I go on for a long time. It's because a channel comes through me when I'm talking. I just kind of talk what comes out of my mouth. And it kind of knocks people out really easy to go in and out of consciousness. Uh, when I'm listening to myself quite often, like, I, I can't stay awake. So it's perfectly all right if you phase in and out. But through if you're learning this for the first time it is important to get all of the instructions in this guided meditation because if you miss some it's not going to work so it's good to be sitting up if you're new it's good to be sitting rather than lying down for this first guided meditation because it gets very relaxing very quickly and it's just easy to pass in an hour of sleep. Right, uh, we're going to start closing your eyes. And for people who know holographic breathing, gently dropping into the holographic breathing. People who don't know holographic breathing, just breathing gently. It is not connective breathing, you've got a space, it's normal breathing with a space. And we're going to bring in some resources, sending a smile to the earth, sending some energy to the earth and allowing the earth to say hello back. Notice what that feels like through your body and through your energies. And sending a smile, sending some energy to the higher self and the beneficial energies. Beneficial energies are only channels, higher beings, basically any beneficial energies you work with. And allowing the higher self and beneficial energies to say hello back. Firstly, you have to ask them. Then secondly, you have to allow them to come in. And then asking the earth, the higher self, and the beneficial energies to be with you through the whole webinar as your guide as your energies as we did that as i said first you have to ask and then you have to allow them in it was just like it felt like hundreds of different energies pouring down into the group that was amazing so um being with your higher self and beneficial energies allow that in 
notice what that feels like through your body. And asking the earth, the higher self and the beneficial energies to be with you for your healing as your guide and as your resource. And to start off with, the lips are closed and relaxed. The tongue is relaxed and on the roof of the mouth. The upper surface of the tongue, it's not the tip of the tongue, it's not turned over backwards as sometimes is done in yoga. The upper surface of the tongue on the roof of the mouth, the tip of the tongue close to or touching the teeth, or touching the teeth, or as close as possible. And then as much as feels comfortable, it may be half an inch, maybe an inch, maybe more. And just start making little up-down motions with the jaw. And notice you can keep your lips closed, you can keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth, and you can make little up down motions of the jaw if it's hard do it slower softer and smaller but notice you can move the jaw you can keep the lips closed and you can keep the tongue on the roof of the mouth and then slow that down, make the movement much slower. And as the jaw is opening, allowing the breath to come in through the nose. And as the jaw is closing, allowing the breath to leave through the nose. Small motion of the jaw, half a finger width, three or four millimeters, quarter of an inch. The lips stay closed all of the time. The tongue stays on the roof of the mouth all of the time. As the jaw gently opens, the breath comes in through the nose. As the jaw gently closes, the breath leaves through the nose. Notice it feels like a little pump. But as the jaw is relaxing, open it, it's drawing the breath in. As the jaw is relaxing, close, the breath is leaving. And on the out breath, as the teeth come together, they just very lightly touch. There's no pressure. Or if it stops short before they touch, that is also fine. If you start the in-breath with the jaw already not touching and just gets a bit wider, that is fine. And it's not a visualization, it's a very physical motion of the jaw. Jaw relaxes open, the breath comes in. As the jaw relaxes closed, the breath leaves, relaxing the back of your neck, relaxing the back of your head, relaxing your whole body. Just becoming used to that. It's quite physical when we're just working from the jaw like this. It's going to change in a minute, but first of all, just get used to this as the jaw relaxes open, the breath comes in. As the jaw relaxes closed, the breath leaves. The lips stay closed all of the time. The tongue stays on the roof of the mouth all of the time. 
now we're going to change the gestalt rather than having the primary awareness on the jaw we're going to bring the awareness to the breath coming in through the nose and as you breathe in the jaw relaxes open notice everything change and as you breathe out through the nose the jaw relaxes closed it's almost as if it's doing it by itself breathing in the jaw relaxes open breathing out the jaw relaxes closed everything gets softer everything becomes more meditative kind of wander into this new breathing energetic mode breathing in the jaw relaxes open breathing out the jaw relaxes closed relaxing the back of your neck relaxing the back of your head and once it's going once holographic breathing has started you no, no longer need the awareness around the jaw and face you can drop into your chest so your chest is opening the jaw follows as the chest is closing the jaw closes kind of on its own it just aligns with the breath it's as if it's a rib or something or a functioning moving part of the breath in the same way as one rib wouldn't stay still while all the others are moving the jaw just starts moving with the breath and the muscles of the breath the chest opens the jaw gently opens as the chest closes the jaw gently closes dropping down into your abdomen the abdomen opens the jaw relaxes open the abdomen closes the jaw relaxes closed notice that you may have this energy and awareness starting to move through your brain through your face, through your head, through your neck, as if the whole skull, face, cranium, brain, neck and throat have started to breathe with the rest of your body. It unites the breath. as the jaw gently moves in this way with the lips closed with the tongue on the roof mouth it starts a dynamic the whole face and brain start to breathe fits together into a matrix that has always been there this isn't a technique we're kind of meant to breathe like this. Notice how it's fitting into your breath like a cellular memory. Holographic breathing is the dynamics of the breath and how the face and brain join the rest of the body in the breath. And as that happens, it starts opening up all the higher functions of the skull, of the brain, of the face, of the neck. And that gives you the ability to channel. That gives you the ability to reside 
with the higher self, with the creator, or to allow those divine energies to flow into you and your energies to flow up into the higher self. As this area starts breathing, it opens a new consciousness. It opens a new reality. It's the beginning of a dawn of a new age of humanity. Not just with this breathing, but with many things. It's part of a global awakening. And this awakening awakes the brain, awakens the face as it starts to breathe, relaxing your neck, relaxing your throat, relaxing your head. We're going to spend a bit of time with the cranial C inside our brain. Coming to the sides of the face and the sides of the cranium. This jaw isn't just opening up and down, but there's a sideways motion that's instigated as you breathe in the whole face and cranium opening out to the sides. On the out breath, the whole face and cranium closing medially back towards the middle. And this spreads through your whole body, very subtle way, everything opening out to the sides as you breathe in everything closing medially as you breathe out. And if you become aware of the sides of your cranium, you've got the temporal bones there as they open, you may feel under the temporal bones is this C. That the brain isn't just this solid lump there, that there's this sea, salt water, through the whole brain, around the brain, in the ventricles inside the brain. And this sea is being ventilated by this sideways motion. You can drop inside your brain and around your brain and you can feel this fluid, or you can view from behind, you start becoming aware of the cranial sea through your brain. It travels down through the spine and around the spine, around the spinal cord, right down to the sacrum. This whole central and upper area of ourselves is a sea, it's seawater, it's our internal sea, and the cells are like seaweed and sea anemones. There are little fish, there's the microglial cells swimming through this sea, and they know where to go, they all journey somehow knowing if there's something wrong there, they just journey to there and fix it. And this sea has an intelligence, water has an intelligence. Not just the cells have an intelligence, the water, the tide has an intelligence, you can feel its intelligence. And that comes out through the spine, flows down 
every nerve. out through the whole body, down the arms and legs, down through the vagus nerve, through all of the organs. This cranial sea flows out. It's water, seawater. Notice how this cranial sea channels light. Light comes into it through the top of the head, through the eyes, through the cranium. Spiritual light comes into it. It's a vortex or a medium to receive the energies of the creator, the energies of the higher self, subtle realms, the divine energies to flow into this cranial sea and disseminate out through the spinal cord and out through the nerves, through your whole body, one continuous body of water channeling the divine energies of the creator and beyond. There's a chakra at the top, the crown chakra is very bright. And also, if you come down behind the eyes, you've got the thalamus, the hypothalamus. These make up the brain, the third eye at the top of the central brain complex. This also has an energy. And all of the cranial sea from the top of the brain flows through the third eye as it travels down into the lower brain and down through the spine and out through the nerves. So you have that bright center back from the eyes. And water has a memory and as it flows through that light, it takes that intelligence into itself, into its memory. It's not just a memory, it is intelligence. Water has an intelligence that travels down through the spinal cord, around the spinal cord, right to the sacrum, and travels out through your whole body. It's a deeply, deeply healing. If you feel any dark places in yourself or injuries, you can let that light you can let that sea flow to those places. You can let the divine consciousness touch those places through the medium of the cranial sea. Something happening in people's necks, allow your neck to be relaxed. Let the energy travel through your neck. 
a lot of higher energy going on and the neck and throat will ground that. Let yourself be aware of your neck and throat and that will start grounding this quite bright energy that has come to play. The neck and throat will give you an earth. And being aware of your heels, the heels of your hands, your sit bones, the lower back of your head, the back of the pelvis, shoulder blades. Sit back in your body. You may feel everything slowing down, getting a bit darker, more connected to the earth. Now in the deep, rich energies of the earth. Again, relax your necks. I think there's a lot of energy traveling through people's cervical spine in their neck, the muscles around that. Allow your neck to relax. And we're going to come back in about a minute. Okay, and when you feel ready, gently allowing yourselves to come back. So in the second meditation, we will start off with that feeling. So in the, I was just reading the, the text there. So in, in the next meditation, we'll start with the cranial C and dropping down inside that. And then in a way, you're moving into the third eye or the thalamus and hypothalamus from within, in a way. Oh. Let me show you a picture of the hypothalamus because it's the hypothalamus the thalamus is actually the brain circuit, uh, which we're going to start a whole webinar series working with the brain, the cerebellum and the arms and legs. It's an energetic circuit in three or four weeks time. Uh, and it has a bright white energy. The fire energy is red and hot. Um, but let's. Here we have within the third ventricle this is the third ventricle here and it comes down these this is the hypothalamus here all of these those are the nuclei of the hypothalamus and that all drops down into the pituitary gland and this is central in the um uh kind of thalamus and hypothalamus area let me to show you these again that's a cross section and that's all in this little beak here in the pituitary gland coming down into this hole in the cranium there and it's sent this is the third ventricle it's all in here the hypothalamus is all in here and it's much fiery red energy in there Oh, <laughs> the face fell off. <laughs> this thing is slowly 
got harder and harder to stick together. It's all the separate bones of the face and cranium. And it started off, it was quite good, but it, more and more I've used it, it just has a will of its own and just falls apart. Okay. So here it is with a face. Um, we're only going to brush over this here. We go into this in detail in the fire energies seminars. You can join those. Um, people I keep trying to read messages. I'm going to ignore them now. So um, you can come to the um, fire energy webinars on the web, under webinars on my website and read that we go into this in far more depth but it's the chin area it's the top here and then see if i can get it to come off without falling apart oh, no it's falling apart And from the back, fire, <coughs> fire energies all inside the nasal passageways coming up to the front inside edge of the eyes there. It's also the underside of the roof and now see the inside of the chin. So it's that area of that. Now this area inside the nasal passageways, where that relates to in the cranium is this fire phoenix here <laughs> this is the fire energies the red bit is the fire energies for the cranium and it comes right down to here and it's the fire phoenix and those legs that are dropping down there you see this this is the voma that that's where the septum is in the nose so all of this is inside this is inside the nasal passageways here and, and the heart of the fire energies for the phoenix is coming down into the nasal passageways and the heart of the fire energies for the face is inside the nasal passageways so you get the heart of the face and the heart of the cranium all coming together and the breath coming in and out so the breath for the face and the cranium passes through this fire circuit so we're going to and the pituitary gland i'm going to take this all apart now now i this is all one bone in an adult it's one bone and in babies it's well it's still one bone in babies but there's cartilage in four places and in the anatomy books, they call it two bones. They've split, they've cut in half the fire sphenix. <laughs> that line there, that they call the sphenoid, and this the occiput. But as you can clearly see there, the sphenix comes right down to here. They cut the sphenix's tail off. And I've just, that's one bone. And the back of it is the earth energies, and the front of the bone is this sphenix. And the See, see it's the screen not only is it miles away from me it's mirror image so everything is backwards <laughs> so i can't i want to try and make it so you can see oh, let's do it like that see this hole here in there i wanted to get it from oh there it is it's upside down i can't get, get out get out of the way that hole there in the back that saddle in the sphenix that is where the pituitary gland is sitting into the central brain complex is coming in through that hole up here and you've got the thalamus about there and then they've got the pituitary gland dropping down into that saddle there there we go that saddle in the pituitary gland and you've got the um the optic nerve is is coming in through those gaps there 
and crossing over. Where does it cross? I think it crosses over just above the. Um, where's it gone? I'm going to screen. <laughs> Oh, come on, there, just in front of that. Let me show you that in this picture here. Um, there you've got the pituitary gland sitting down. This is Stella, Stella, can't remember the name of it, but it's, it's something tersica. The saddle is here. And then you, again, it's all mirror image and you've got the optic nerve crossing over above and slightly forwards from the optic nerve. So you've got all this energy going to the eyes, the whole area of light, the uh, pituitary gland there. So I do give the anatomy. I like it. It gives me something to view. I like to know where things are. So we're going to start on that journey and we will connect to the deep earth energies at the back of the head the back of the pelvis the fire energies at the front of the cranium the front of the face the front of the pelvis it's the pubic arch in the pelvis all right Let's begin. So, making yourselves ready. Wave if I'm loud enough. Yeah, brilliant. I'm just going to check that no one can turn their mics on. Okay, that's good. All right, closing your eyes. And gently dropping into the holographic breathing. Just allowing the breath to move through you. The lips are relaxed and closed. The tongue is on the roof of the mouth. On the in-breath, the jaw is relaxing open. And on the out-breath, the jaw is relaxing closed. And also feeling that sideways motion through the face, through the cranium, through the body. Notice how easy the holographic breathing comes and how easy it is to feel that sideways motion. I'm feeling that at the sides of the cranium. <clears throat> And also feeling inside the cranium and the cranial C. Being aware of the third eye area of the thalamus and the hypothalamus and 
how they join to the top of that whole central brain complex. And the, the pituitary gland is dropping down into this saddle in the fire sphenic. and start becoming aware of that bone, the fire sphenix. And as you do, you may start feeling your heart. And as you come in at the hypothalamus area, that's quite high up in the fire sphenix. If you drop down to the base of it where the spine is, that's like the pelvis for the fire sphenix. You feel this much hotter area, the front of the cranium, and it's got wings coming out the side. It's like a sphenix, it can fly with its wings or a dragon. Notice how hot you start to feel. And the fire sphenix can breathe fire out through the nose. So it may be a fire dragon breathing fire out through the nasal passageways. You may feel this dropping down into your chin area. You may feel this relating to your pubic arch. And also to your chalice and seed. Notice how this lights up the whole fire energy towards the front of your body. And you might feel your chalice and seed igniting. So if you move back a bit, you move back in the cranium, back past the spine, into the back of the head, from the chin to the back of the jaw, from the pubic arch back to the sit bones. Notice the energy completely changes, deep, dark earth energy. The fire drops down into this earth energy. And then moving forwards into the fire sphenix, into the nasal passageways, into the chin, into the pubic arch. Notice how warm you start to become. And feeling your chalice and seed as the earth root for the fire circuit. Also good to relax around the top of the chest, the thymus gland, the thyroid gland, the top of the sternum. Let this area relax.
Notice when you let that go, you start being able to channel. You let the lower throat go, you let the thymus gland go, starts connecting up through the face and cranium. Letting it release through the whole third eye area or the hypothalamus and up through the top of your head into the higher energies. Notice you may get some releases from your chalice and seed releasing right up through that circuit and up into the higher self. And the higher self starts channeling down through you or around you, down into the chalice and seed. So it comes in through your cranium, but it makes its way down through the heart, through the thymus and thyroid, through the heart, down into your chalice and seed. And sometimes your chalice and seed may release energies up through that circuit. And other times it may just receive the light of God into your chalice. Allow yourself to receive those channeled energies into your chalice. For the men, this is the prostate. It's right down sitting on top of the pelvic floor between the pubic arch and the rectum. And for the women, it's your uterus. Allowing that to be healed by the gods. To use it for creation, you can also use it to receive the energies of the divine beings, the higher self, as a place to receive God, as a place to create. And you may feel the chalice and seed talking to each other. You may feel the energies passing back and forth between your chalice and seed. Notice as the chalice and seed talk to each other, it creates this energy that rises up through this circuit right up into the higher self. Also feeling down into the earth, the chalice for the earth is the magma. Letting that channel go right down into the magma. You feel the earth energy is very different, very grounded, almost physical as they move through your body. This is deeply, deeply healing for the char chalice and seed.
Let your necks relax. Let the energy travel through your neck. And just channeling and channeling, just letting those energies flow up and down through you. Be open to being a channel. Notice how that starts, not just the uterus, as the uterus or as the chalice, the prostate, starts releasing the whole pelvis, starts releasing. So healing, right down into the center of your pelvis into the perineum in the pelvic floor. So healing. This is your whole female lineage and past karma. Letting that release and release. May want to unwind and let go of all sorts of stuff. Just letting it do it. Letting your neck relax, letting that energy go through your neck as your chalice heals. Letting the divine energies heal your chalice. Letting the earth heal your chalice. Something happening in the upper spine, letting the spine relax between your shoulder blades and where it's joining to the neck and through the neck. Let your thymus and thyroid relax. So much energy stored up in these organs, just letting it go. It's like lifetimes and lifetimes of energy. You may feel the small of your back releasing. Yeah, that seems to be clearing now. Gently breathing. And sitting back more into the sit bones. To the sides and back of the jaw to the occiput at the back of the cranium. Notice everything cooling up down in this deep, rich energy.
Notice your spine, notice if your spine is wanting to release and let it release. And sending a thank you to the earth. Thank you to the higher self. Thank you to the beneficial energies. Letting the energies go off for love and healing to the earth. Love and healing to the higher self and beneficial energies. Allowing yourselves to be loved and healed. Letting the energies go off to all sentient beings for love and healing. And you are a sentient being, allowing yourself to be loved and healed. Um, working especially we didn't do much work with the chalice before. We worked with the testes and ovaries, but we didn't really do much work with the chalice. And for both men and women, I, the, 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 the karma is, is like the chalice is God's vehicle. You know, it is for creating life in, in humans, but also it's for channeling into and when you start channeling into it, it seems to clear the car. It's not just of this lifetime. When we work with the other organs, it definitely is this lifetime for quite a while and then drops back into previous. When we work with the chalice, it just travels for me, goes through our heritage, through our ancestry, through our past lives. And if you think of it, because you spend the first nine months in your mother's chalice. And she spent her first nine months in her mother's chalice. And she spent her first nine months in her chalice. And it's all holographic breathing. So if you're in your mother's chalice and you're picking up the karma from your mother's chalice, it may be holding in too your body in different ways but where it will get mirrored is into your chalice and then if you're a woman you pass that directly on to your children or if you're a man in the act of love making the energy of that is coming through so to me there seems to be an immense karma to be cleared globally you know this spreads out through the generations very quickly to everyone in the world and the, all ancestry so there, there seems to be a lot of work working with it and if you want to carry on we will be working with that in far more depth next sunday that is the last one i will probably run another one maybe in a few months time but you will receive the recordings of the previous two and be able to come to that. And it, it's 18 pounds for three. It's normally 14 pounds for one and then seven pounds when you come to the next one or the next one. So it was already reduced. And then I added another one free of charge for it because so much, I wasn't expecting so much to come to the surface. So um, if you want to take this deeper, come come along to that and if you want to also work with all of the other energies we work with the you know the chalice is very much to do with the womb and creation the small intestines which are the sister organ to that relates to womb life and early childhood then the next organ is the hara next one is the heart we also work with the thymus the thyroid 
all of these different energy points in much more detail in the fire energies webinar so that is there as well they're all on the webinar page of my website i will run another free webinar in about a month on a sunday and i will look at doing some short ones on maybe a tuesday or wednesday when we'll just channel <laughs> i will just teach holographic breathing and forget all the other stuff we'll just let god in and or the creator in or the higher beings in or your higher beings in or what we'll just fucking let it all come through <laughs> let everyone get healed so um that i used to i had this lady come to my tai chi classes and boy i mean boy did she have an energy you really knew about it when she was in the room and she was the um she was the secretary for the spiritual church she was the main medium in the world for the spiritualist church and she used to invite me along to this big mansion in surrey in england somewhere where they used to meet because it was the founder whoever founded I tell you whoever founded the spiritual church was really rich because they got this huge mansion and massive gardens that he gave to the spiritual church when he left and she would invite me along there she kept on saying to me you are a medium and you're denying it <laughs> I said, no i'm not well now i'm kind of realizing that i am so um we're, we're gonna do that 